Hi, in this video we'll learn about the exponential random variable. We're going to be determining probabilities of an exponential random variable, but also learn about this distribution's memoryless property. It's a very special property for a random variable. So let's go to an example. Let x denote the time between detections of a particle with a Geiger counter and assume x has an exponential distribution. You can see uh, the probability density function here of the exponential distribution with a mean of 1.4 minutes. So if we know the mean is 1.4 minutes, we actually know the parameter of the exponential distribution. Um, let me remind you, the exponential distribution takes on the form f of x equals lambda e to the negative lambda x for x's bigger than zero. And so in this case, if we know the mean of the exponential random variable, his parameter lambda is 1 over the mean, 1.4. So this particular probability density function is written as f of x equals 1 over 1.4 e to the negative 1 over 1.4 x for x's greater than zero. So this is the exact probability density function. So what we're trying to determine in this, pro in this problem is the probability that a particle is detected in the next 30 seconds. So let's go ahead and change this to minutes. This is actually a half a minute. So x, again, is the time, and here's the distribution. And we're trying to find out uh, the probability that the time for the next particle detection is in within a half a minute. So we're trying to find this area under the curve. So let's go ahead and write that as a probability uh, computation. That's the probability that the random variable x is less than 0.5. Okay, so we're going to be integrating because, again, x is a continuous random variable. So this is the integral from 0 to 0 0.5 of f of x, and here's our f of x. 1 over 1.4 e to the negative 1 over 1.4 x dx. Okay, so this is not hard to integrate. It's an exponential. This is negative e to the negative 1 over 1.4 x for x's ranging from 0 to 0.5. So let's go ahead and plug 0.5 in. This is e to the negative, negative 1, point, 1 over 1.4. Uh, 0.5 minus a minus e to the, let's put in 0. So this is actually just uh, 1 minus e to the negative 0.5 over 1.4. And if I go ahead and calculate this, this is around 0 0.3003. So in this first prob problem, we were just looking at the probability that uh, a particle is detected within the first half a minute, and we're given the probability density function. We're able to compute it because we're given the mean of the exponential random variable, which tells us the parameter. So now we're going to go on and continue this problem um, and show what I mean by the memoryless property. So we start off with the same conditions. Uh, x is uh, the time between detections of a particle. Uh, x has an exponential distribution with a mean of 1.4 minutes. But now we're going to look at uh, a, a conditional probability. So suppose that we turn on the Geiger counter and we wait three minutes, so three minutes, and we haven't detected a particle. What's the probability that a particle will then be detected within the next half a minute? So let's, again, remember that 30 seconds is half a minute. So we're trying to find a conditional probability here, so let's just at least set up the statement first. So um, this is the given that. So probability, we're trying to find something given that. In this case, um, x, we know, is greater than 3 minutes. Um, if we haven't detected a particle, we've waited at 3 minutes, haven't seen anything, then we know that the, the detection of the first particle is at least greater than 3 minutes. So now we're trying to figure out what's the probability that we see a particle within the next half a minute, given we've waited more than three minutes. So this part of the conditional is x less than 3.5. And now we have our statement. So we've learned earlier how to compute conditional probabilities. This is just the probability of x less than 3.5 and x bigger than 3 
divided by probability x greater than 3. Okay, so this is just the probability that x is between 3 and 3.5 given the probability of x being greater than 3. So these are both integrals. Let's go ahead and compute them. The top is uh, area under the curve between 3 and 3.5. This was our probability density function, e to the dx. Okay, and on the bottom, the probability bigger than 3 is 3 to infinity, 1 over 1.4, e to the negative 1 over 1.4x dx. Okay, let's make sure you see that. Okay, so this top one, uh, the antiderivative is uh, e, or a negative e, the negative 1.4x, 1. 1. and that ranges from 3 to 3.5. And on the bottom, we have uh, negative e, the negative 1 over 1. 1.4, ranging from x equals 0 to infinity. So in the numerator, we're going to get uh, negative e, to the negative 1.14 times 3.5. Uh, minus a minus will be a plus e to the negative 1 over 1 1.4 times 3. And in the bottom, actually remember when we put infinity, here's, I, I don't have my x. When I go to infinity, put uh, the limit as x goes to infinity, this thing here will go to 0. So um, all I'm uh, Sorry, down here also I have 3. So this thing is going to go to 0, but then when I put in 3, I get e to the negative 1 over 1. 1.4 times 3. Okay, so sorry about that, but I think you can see this. Before I had 3 to infinity, it goes from 3 to infinity. Just a typo. So if we reduce it, so here's the magic part. I could just compute probabilities and not not really, you know, think, and something magic will come out, and it'll it'll be amazing. But I think if you go ahead and reduce this, you'll see the really really neat part. So what I'm going to do is divide both of these values in the numerator by the denominator. So this will come out to be negative e three. There's a 3.5 here, and there's a three here. So this will be e to the negative one point one over one point four times 0.5, and this will be plus, and then that's e to negative 1 over 1. 1.4 times 3. These are identical, so this is just going to be 1. So this is 1 minus e to the negative 1 divided by 1. 1.4 times 0. 0.5, and this is approximately, you might go, I might have seen that number before. This is the, this is the beautiful part. So let's go up here. This is exactly the same number we had in the previous part of this example. See, here we are again. And this we know is approximately 0. 0.3003. Let me go back and show you that again, right? It's exactly the same figure. I mean, I rewrote the first and second terms, the order of them, but it's it's the same probability. So that's what I mean by the memoryless property. Um, the exponential here, x, the time, didn't even really realize or remember that it's already gone on for three minutes without seeing a particle. It's as if when we turn on the Geiger count, after three minutes, we turn it on as if it's fresh, and we're trying to say, what's the probability we see a particle within half a minute now? So the fact that we've already waited three minutes without detecting a particle doesn't change the fact that we're still going to find the same probability of detecting a particle in the next 30 seconds. That that first three minutes without seeing a particle is is irrelevant. It's as if, again, three minutes have gone on and you could act like you turn on the machine, turn it off and turn it back on again, and we're really trying to find the probability we see a particle within the next half a minute. So this is identical, I mean, to finding probability that x is less than 0.5. And that's what we mean by the memoryless property. So I hope, um, I think this is a really cool example because I do like, um, I, I, I hope that you can see here that there's nothing magic. I was just doing an exponential computation and this is what comes out. And it will always be that case with an exponential that is memoryless. And so anytime you have an exponential distribution, you can apply that property. So just as a review again, um, x was a, 
exponential random variable. We got its parameter from knowing its mean. We found the probability uh, of x being less than half a minute by integrating. Um, and the next problem, what we did is we looked at a conditional probability, which in fact turned out to be to have the same probability as the original problem we calculated. And we found out this is due to that memoryless property. So I hope what the memoryless property is saying to you makes sense. It's again, this you've already gone three minutes without seeing a particle. What's the probability you'll have to wait less than three and a half minutes? That's going to be the same probability as if you just turned on the Geiger counter and have to wait less than a half a minute. So that's what we mean by memoryless. So I hope this has helped, and uh, we'll talk again.